rise and shine, Mr. Flynn Man. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been slacking on the cast. No one is more deserving of a rest. And all the answers in the world would have gone to waste until, well, let's just say your hour has come again. The right answer to the wrong question can make all the difference in the world. So wake up, Mr. Flynn Man. Wake up and do the Bumblecast. Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Krause. Hello, we're here, and uh, boy, it's November, and we're really hitting the ground running because we got a lot of going on, so yay. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, by the way, is the release of Sonic Frontiers. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Ian, mm -hmm. oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh boy! All of you who managed to get an early copy and showed restraint and respect for me and the rest of the dev team by not spreading spoilers, thank you very much. You are beacons of the fandom. You are why we can have good things. I appreciate you showing the respect to us, and you know I hope you enjoyed. Absolutely, don't fault you for grabbing a copy early because I mean it's right there, but. You know, allowing everyone else to experience it fresh and not having to dodge spoilers. That's cool of you. So thank you very much. And once the game's out, I hope everyone can enjoy talking about the game on an equal playing field. And to the person who's apparently already gone through the game and gotten to the final boss and beaten the final boss and posted it on YouTube. Why'd you do that? What's up? Oh, you know why. What's up, man? Come on. Come on, you just know you're gonna get a DMCA takedown anyway. <laughs> but yes, I do know why. I do know why. They're jerks. <sighs> well, we got some not jerks here. We got the lovely priority patrons who yes, uh, yes, help they send us our questions. Yes, they do. From patreon.com slash bumblecast, kofi.com slash bumblecast, or as a YouTube member. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Starting with this one from Alex GS. I haven't noticed quite as many references to the Lost Hedgehog Tales in recent times. For myself, and perhaps some of the other new listeners who've joined this year, would you mind doing another overview of what exactly the Lost Hedgehog Tales is and what it encompasses? I'm hoping to get myself caught up on everything Archie in the near future, and I'd like to know a bit more about how to discuss and ask questions about it once I'm able to. Thanks, guys. So this is something I announced back when the Archie comics ended uh no was it then or was it after the reboot i can't even remember i it's think it so was long. i think it was the first reboot the first re God. salt to the wound uh -huh. um that's would be details on what i had planned you know had things not unceremoniously been unplugged where was i hoping to take things with the Big old caveat that, you know, most of them were not editorial or licensed or approved. Ultimately, it's glorified fanfic when you get down to it. But given my position in the fandom, it carries some weight. And unfortunately, weight comes with baggage or baggage has weight or <laughs> I don't know. I've murdered this metaphor. Anyway, point is, there's various factors that's stopping me from going through with it just now and i'm waiting for those to hopefully clear up and it's been a while and folks are rightfully kind of impatient and you know i am too but that's life <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and it has been so long that once i can finally get in the clear and do it i am going to kind of prompt folks saying you know what was it you wanted to look for what were you looking forward to what questions did you have lingering I mean, I'm going to be going through all of my old notes and stuff to refresh myself, but there were a lot of spin and plates in both continuities. So it doesn't hurt to be prompted to say, hey, what was this? And, you know, go back and look at it again. But there is no timetable on that because everything is out of my control. 
with regards to the extenuated circumstances. So if you're looking forward to it and you haven't decided that I'm a lying jerk, thank you for your patience and your faith. I promise it will come eventually one way or the other. <laughs> you must uh, get this albatross off your neck. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> It's just going to it's going to be there forever if you don't do something about it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but I didn't tie it there. Well, yeah, I did. I absolutely did. Oh, yeah, you could have did. You could have just said, nope, we're not doing anything or never said anything and just kind of did, didn't put it out there when it was ready instead of saying something. But hey, you know what? That's fine. It, 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 it happens. It happens. All right. Here's a question from Alphamon or you can. How smart is Kit compared to Tails? That has yet to be explored. Um, he's certainly a smart cookie, but if he, we haven't seen yet whether he is as technically minded as Tails or if he's just really smart in other regards. I don't want to put too fine a point on it yet because there's, he's still fairly new. There's still room to explore him, and I don't want to undercut Evan or anyone else who may want to explore that themselves. All righty. Speaking of Tales, here's a question from And Tales. I was reflecting on the latest Tales Tube episode where Knuckles told Tales that he'd be getting tossed off the side of my island if he tried running tests on the Master Emerald. This was in the context of fun banter, but it got me thinking. If Tales were to ask really nicely to study the Master Emerald, and if assurances that the Master Emerald wouldn't be harmed in any shape or form were provided, would Knuckles really say no? I asked because this scenario played out in a long fic I wrote back in 2020, except the Redican was more than happy to let his pal study the giant rock. So I'm curious if you think that it would be out of character for Knuckles to trust Tails with studying the Master Emerald. Nobody touches the Master Emerald. Nobody looks at it funny. Like, <laughs> he trusts Tails to a degree, but the Master Emerald is off limits, period. Um... The whole throw him off the island thing? Yeah, that was banter. Unless Tails tried to go around him anyway. And then maybe it would be less banter and more <laughs> trebuchet. But Well, I mean, Tails could fly anyway, so it's not like it's... It's not actual, a serious threat. No, it's not yeah, an yeah, actual yeah. threat, really, no. Yeah. Uh, you know, Knuckles is the... He trusts Tails enough that he's not going to follow it up with a rock you know, afterwards. But with fanfic... It's your story, man. Do what you want. I am not going to critique the canonicity of the way you want to do it or how you want to interpret the characters. You do to you. All right. Here's one from Arc Fighter. If Neo Metal Sonic were to try to copy Kirby's biodata, what would happen? Would it fail and overload him? Would he gain a stronger copy ability? Or because he's kind of a jerk, would he corrupt into a giant dark matter possessed mega dragon? Dark and stormy night. Everyone rushes up just in time to see Kirby struggling in Neo Metal's grip. Everyone's aghast as they can tell that he's being copied and Kirby gets dropped. He bounces away. A shimmering metallic pink overtakes the blue. And then the eyes flicker from red to green and Neo Metal looks at everyone and says, Boy, oh. And he becomes their new friend. <laughs> so he does become corrupted, but not in a... Giant, evil, dark matter-possessed Mega Dragon kind of way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Bumblecast fan artist, here's your homework for this episode. Pink, <laughs> Neo, Metal, and Kirby drawing little cartoon drawings on a big shared piece of paper. Add cream in there, too, for extra saccharine sweetness. Of course. Of course. <laughs> here's one from Ava Arctic, asking for a friend who is an Eggman fan. So the Eggman and Archie seem to have a rather notable sadistic streak doing everything from implanting bombs in his own forces to permanently imprisoning people who disappointed him. Rest in peace, Snively, and that guy who lost the shield generator. IDW Eggman, while just as willing to throw hands, again, rest in peace, Platypus Man, doesn't seem to have the same kind of sadistic tendencies. Is he still willing to do these kinds of things, or is this more of an Eggman that doesn't go excessive unless absolutely necessary? He still goes excessive, but I think... He's more to the point. Um, Archie Eggman was more Machiavellian, I guess. He was more methodical, whereas IDW Eggman is more get it done. You know, like I'm I'm taking mm -hmm. ideas here, like at a lost world where he you know 
beats the ice wall apart with his bare hands because he's just that mad <laughs> where he, you know, is going to blow up station square because he can't level it with chaos. Like he wants Wah. the man is, I don't want to say he doesn't go to extremes, but I guess it's more of a action reaction type rather than slow and methodical, you know, let you twist in the wind. Gotta admit, I kind of miss Archie Eggman. Just, ah, he's so evil. Truly evil. Yeah. Like, I mean... They're virtually they're, the same. It's just nuanced. Yes, it's it's very nuanced. There's not much difference, but there's, you know, there's differences. There's enough to be noticeable. Yeah, sure. There's enough to be noticeable, so... Yeah, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it'll come. Maybe it'll come back to that. We'll see. Here's a question from Oz Jam. Flanderization is a term created out of the titular character from The Simpsons, Ned Flanders. It's the process through which a single element of a character's personality, often originally a mild element, is inflated in importance over the course of work until it becomes their primary defining characteristic. While mostly a negative aspect in most media, what would you say is a positive example of this trope? If that's a tricky question then what would you say about avoiding flanderization for new writers and how to mostly avoid it? Amy Rose and Knuckles are the ones that come to mind, even though I think it depends on context, a.k.a. the Boom series. Yeah, I can't think of a positive, unless you want to make the argument that the Boom cast is kind of flanderizations of the main series. They are, but it's comedy. It's more for comedy. It's played for laughs. So I can't think of an instance where it isn't used as self parody or even direct parody. And that I don't feel like is to the crux of your question. Like, I think you're asking when has it happened in universe to its own benefit? And I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of where it's happened in universe for most anything at all. The only thing I can think of is like fan stuff, like, Zero from the Mega Man X series constantly <laughs> dying, even though he only died like twice. <laughs> only twice. It's always well, you know. Well, it's also a, a robot. He gets better. Longevity of the series. <laughs> but yes, yes, that's also part of it. Yeah. You know, if something goes for one season, they don't have time to be flanderized. Right. Yeah. That's um, true. Let's see. But in terms of avoiding it. I think it comes down to a matter of if it's your personal project, every so often go back and read the first few things you've done with the characters and the world you're in and compare it to where it is now. Um, That's something I feel like we've kind of run into with uh, Tangle out of everybody is she was always kind of boisterous and happy and bouncy, but she was also a scrapper. You know, she would get in there and mix it up. And I feel like the goofiness has kind of taken over she's become the kind of comedic side and not to the point where that's her only character trait. I don't think she's been completely derailed, but it is something that I'm kind of aware of. So it's something I want to keep in mind with her specifically moving forward. Uh, I guess another example I can think of, although it's again, comedic um, South park kind of over time characters have been boiled down to more and more of a thing or Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I mean, Kenny obviously got, (laughs) <laughs> a lot of that early on but that's like the only thing i could think of and and again that's more played for laughs than actual than an actual like change within the work that benefits right. the work so hmm. interesting thought here's a question from axis it seems that lately sega is putting more attention and care to the lore of past sonic games like deciding which games are canon and which ones are not and even sorting some games into a more strict chronological order. I reckon the continuity between all Sonic games is a mess and full of plot holes, but would you say Sega wants to build a more cohesive narrative between games moving forward, or do you see these problems still happening in future games? I think there's a... What can I say here? I think there is a general desire to be more cohesive going forward. The games that have come out have come out. And there's no way to make them perfectly fit without, you know, full on remaster retconning the entire Sonic library. And (laughs) that ain't going to happen. But I think it's more of uh, this is where we've been. This is what's been accomplished. Where do we go from here? 
<laughs> it does seem like there's somebody within Sega who's taking this sort of thing under their wing and nurturing it and trying to make it into something that uh, hopefully, hopefully, could be something that was built on in the future. So, fingers crossed for that. And we got one last question before we take a break from Batman 69 LOL. Ian and Kyle, pick a rated R, TVMA, or M for Mature franchise. How would you pitch that franchise as an as a for all ages comic series? How would you alter it so it would be for everyone, but without ruining the spirit of the franchise? I don't know if you can do that. Why not? You've done it before. People have done it before. Without watering it down to the point where it's a pale imitation of what came before? Well, I mean, that would be almost impossible to do. <laughs> but, uh... Like, I'm thinking of, like, the old Mortal Kombat animated series or <laughs> the Aliens animated series or... <laughs> Godzilla animated series. Uh, Beetlejuice. There we go. That's a good example, actually, right there. What was that rated? Uh, that's a that's very much a rated R movie, I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah, I think so. But the Beetlejuice, Man. the car the what cartoon for R. But the cartoon was really solid, so uh, Yeah, are you all right, sure you it was P are you sure? Hang on. Chat's saying that Beetlejuice was PG. I uh... I that makes more sense. No, it doesn't. Not really. Sure it does. It's not really. It's it's, it's pretty. Ah, geez. It was PG. Hmm. <laughs> Rated. What? It is PG. Okay. That is appropriate for ages 13 and up. Well, okay, this must have been pre-PG-13. Man. Yeah. Huh. When did PG-13 come around? Because it's been... It hasn't been nearly as long as the rest. It kind of came out because a lot of things were rated PG that were definitely not for little, <laughs> little, little kids. Like probably <laughs> Beetlejuice. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. RoboCop marketed to kids. <laughs> Everything got marketed to kids back in the day. Yeah. All right, I guess maybe like RoboCop, if you take away all the vicious maiming and just focus on robot fights, bad guys. But even then, I feel like the lack of the dystopian corporate overlords and the hyper violence is part of RoboCop. Right. Know? Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is a sort of a pastiche takedown of capitalism, really. <laughs> like I can, and... I can very easily see your cheap Saturday morning cartoon version of Duke Nukem with <laughs> everything dialed down to a three, but then it's not really the Duke, is it? <laughs> well, I mean, you can say pretty much the same things. <laughs> I'm here to chew bubble gum and kick bottom. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> oh no, my bottom. <laughs> Ah. here's my black cop sidekick who shows that there's good cops out there those pigs they don't look like cops at all they're mm -hmm. strange mutants <laughs> look at my tastefully clad and singular girlfriend <laughs> only one and they only call him duke they don't actually say the nukem in any of the episodes they can't say nukem because it's copyright <laughs> Copyright Captain Planet. <laughs> Can't say Duke Nukem. It's only the Duke. The Duke. He would be a good Saturday morning cartoon character, honestly. Yeah, oh yeah, sure. But... <laughs> he already is. <laughs> I feel like quality adult entertainment uses those elements to the effect of their narrative it becomes part of the storytelling and part of the whole narrative construction right and i can't think of the thing anything off the top of my head where you could remove those elements and retain the essence it would just be a hollow version of what came before or it would have to dance around its themes and actions in such a way that it's like this isn't really satisfying <laughs> now if if you're listening right now and you're like, no, Ian, you idiot, there's this clear example of what you could do, please comment below. 
educate me. But uh, I don't know. I I read this question and the first thing that popped in my head was Saturday Morning Watchmen. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm literally looking at that right now. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Good old Harry Partridge's Saturday Morning Watchmen. Legendary. John don't give you cancer and turn into a car. <laughs> Ah, boy. Oh, boy. Mm. Oh, that Rorschach. I'm so wacky. Yep, yep. That's him, all right. (laughs) Wacky. Yes, that's one way to describe Rorschach. (laughs) All right. Well, I guess we're going to take a break here, and uh, then we'll be back with more Bumblecast. We've got a sponsored ad from our good friend Daniel H. He says, I'd like you to meet Janie. She's a skilled musician, creator of the funny webcomic Fletcher Apartments, a loving wife, and just a cool cat you'd like to know. She could use some help. Janie's raising funds to help cover her gender-affirming surgery, and she's saving every last cent she can, but between the bills and the rent, it's not enough. Click the GoFundMe link to learn more. And spread the word, if you please. Thank you, and be well. We do have the link in the description below, so please give it a click and help Janie out if you can. We're back with a question from Butter Noodles. It's the Battle of the Antis, the evil rivals to the heads of the console war, Scourge versus Wario. For balance reasons, Scourge gets super Scourge. Why? Uh, what does what, what, hmm. what Wario get? He, I guess he has that superhero thing. Yeah, superhero what is that, Super ego. Wario Man? Yeah, I've, I think. Mm. I forget. That's hard to call because Wario's just kind of weird. I mean, so is Scourge, to be fair. Yeah, Scourge runs by mostly Sonic's rules, you know? It's just he doesn't pull his punches. Mm. Wario Wario is, like, at least competitively as powerful as Mario with the added brawn and then his weird on top of that. And if we want to factor into Wario where, like, is he going to trap Scourge in an arcade-styled you know, series of death rooms. I don't know how this works. Ah. I feel like Scourge would be out of his, uh, out of his depth here. Even as super. He wouldn't know how to handle this guy. No, he would have no clue. I mean, the first time Wario just extends his face three times its normal size and chews on Scourge's head, he'd be going, what's going on? (laughs) (laughs) He gobbles down some garlic. (laughs) <laughs> this rips a big nuclear fart, and uh, it's all over, man. It's all over. <laughs> oh man, I think yeah, I think Scourge is just out of his depth on that one. It's mm, mm, would not go well for him. He's dragging himself off the battlefield, reeking of garlic, <sighs> and then the final blow comes when he finds that Fiona's hooked up with Waluigi. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> Have you seen that guy? <laughs> Here's a question from Chaos Sonic 1. With Battle Network returning to the public consciousness, what would a double soul Nicole with Mega Man.exe and Nicole would be dope and look like? Ah, uh, give Mega Man basically her color scheme. Like maybe like the base browns with uh, purple accents and black markings. Mm-hmm. And weapon wise, I'm imagining kind of like Rico out of um, Mega Man X Dive, where you summon up a number of holographic screens as like shields or as projectiles. That makes sense. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Here's a question from Conga. Sega has decided to have another Sonic Storybook game, this time in the Lord of the Rings. Well, it's not public domain yet, but who knows? Maybe someday it will be. Given the choice of any character from any continuity, who will they replace in Middle-Earth? Does Styx replace Gollum? Since the cast of Lord of the Rings is huge, you can limit it to the Fellowship, Bilbo, Gollum, Arwen, and Saruman, but you're welcome to do more. P.S. If Sonic ends up being Aragorn, you can avoid Arwen. I figured just a keep things going sonic would have to be frodo i mean that's 
the center of the journey. He's the one carrying the ring. And he's used to carrying rings. <laughs> he usually carries a lot of, well, it depends on what version of it we're talking about. Because we're talking about <laughs> IDW, so he doesn't carry any ever. <laughs> and it would be worth it just for him to get to the end of the Prancing Pony, and he has to use a pseudonym. And he says, and what would that name be? Uh, Underground. Mr. Underground. <laughs> Give those fans a nice little nod. <laughs> uh, you got to have Saru Eggman. Oh, no. <laughs> I guess man is right there in his name. With an entire legion of Uruk pawns. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> Have a Death Egg esque tower of Baradur. Yes. The big eye with a mustache. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or kind of like the red eye boss out of the Death Egg, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm envisioning Zavok as the Balrog, <laughs> who still gets punked by an old man, Waka Waka. Yep, yep, that's right. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he gets punked by Gandalf the Big. Gandalf the Big. <laughs> you shall not pass. <laughs> Gandalf the Big. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. That's perfect. God, who's going to be Sam? Is that is that just Tails? It's got to be Tails, because who else is going to be the most supportive of, you know, Sonic Frodo? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it begs the question, why doesn't he just fly Sonic into Mordor? But, you know, that's yeah. tradition at this point. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the eagles cannot summon the eagles. <laughs> fly, you fools. And who's Knuckles in this situation? Gimli. Aha, yes. Okay. Okay. You have my sword and my bow and my fist. fist. I mean, axe. <laughs> my fist will be carrying my axe. The point is, I'm here with you. Yeah. The sticks would be Gollum, right? I mean. Yeah, maybe. She, she probably is the one who best fits that role. It's I mean, kinda... If we want some kind of weaselly, obsessive guy that's pathetic, but also you don't mind him falling into lava, I'm kind of inclined to say Zor. Maybe. It's I just, just I don't want sticks to catch on fire, is my point. Yeah, that's true. Snively, I would I much guess. rather hear her be like Merry or Pippin. <laughs> yeah, that would make a little more sense. Who's Aragorn, then? I'm trying to think of, like, a straight-up noble and powerful but chill character maybe mighty like let's just here we're gonna mine classic sonic we're gonna update him to modern just so he can be aragorn that's right <laughs> damn right uh is shadow in this uh <laughs> maybe hmm. i can't really see him as legolas no that seems more like a blaze thing blaze would probably be legolas yeah maybe uh, Maybe. Yeah, I think it would be fun. Although I kind of see Blaze as Galadriel. Uh, maybe, yeah. Instead of a dark lord, you would have a queen. <laughs> as beautiful and terrible as the dawn, as the flames come up. <laughs> okay, you you sold me. <laughs> maybe, silver, maybe Silver is Legolas and he doesn't even need a bow. He just points and things fly at their targets. Yeah, there we go. That works. I'm just trying to think of who would play off Knuckles the best, because, you know, you got to have the whole Legolas and Gimli bro mm, bromance. Mm, mm. <laughs> but, hmm. Is that, is that everybody? Eh, that's enough. Okay, okay. I mean, like, there's Rouge, Vector, I suppose, but, hmm. <laughs> oh. You got me thinking Vector is Aragorn. I would have followed you to the end. Okay, there we go. Found him. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. If you have any oh, other Boromir. suggestions, that's who we couldn't think of. Boromir. We oh, Boromir. Boromir. Maybe he. Maybe Vector's Boromir. Someone with great intentions, but is still swayed by the temptation. Yeah. And yeah. Vector really does need to pay his rent. <laughs> Bilbo. Bilbo's just Gollum, so... Right? No, he's not. Never mind. No. Bilbo... I don't know why I was thinking that. 
No. Uh, we'll, we'll do we'll do a super deep cut and say Uncle Chuck for Bilbo. Yeah, I, that works. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. All right. If you got any answers, other suggestions, uh, you know what to do. Put them down in the comments. Here's a question from Crucified Demon. The Sonic Universe Arc Scourge Lockdown features a location called a Zone Jail that was filled with inmates from across the multi-zones. Some were villains from the games, while others were these alternate versions of Sonic characters. However, the one that always stuck with me personally, and was one who didn't even fall into either of these categories, in issue 32, page 26, there's an inmate who's not even an animal. He's like a human with a jack-o'-lantern for a head. What was up with that guy? Do you think on the planet Mobius, from any Sonic canon... Do you suppose there exists a species of pumpkin heads, as I've referred to them, that are exactly like what I described the inmate from this comic? I had to go back and look this up, and I think it's just Tracy doing random goofy things in the background. It seems like it's probably more like a reference to like Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horse. Maybe. But that's Tracy. I mean, it's just Tracy. It's kind of his thing, you know? It could also be a deep cut reference to the pumpkin head ghosts. That or too. Let's say one and two. It could be both. Heroes, I think. Who knows? With that guy. So, <laughs> and it's the multiverse. Anything goes. So yeah, there's an entire you know, dimension of pumpkin heads. Everyone's got a pumpkin head. That's the. Yeah. That's the. Who knows? It's the pumpkin head universe. Everyone's got a pumpkin for a head. Everybody. Literally everybody. Here's a question from Exidel. Given your love of the dark mirror of the hero trope, what would you say is your favorite instance of this that inspired you to use it as much as you have? My personal favorite would probably be the reverse flash. I can't think of what started it personally, but one of the best examples that I can think of is Tales of the Abyss, which if you haven't played it yet, it's an older RPG and I'll try to be spoilerish free. But basically, the enemy party is some flip or antithesis to the player party to some degree or the other. Some more than others. I mean, the mental gymnastics you have to draw between guy and sink or let's just say limber up before you try to draw those parallels. But uh, they are there. And it's part of why I just find that game so freaking engaging is... They're not just, you know, straight up evil clones because there's some fun in that, but that you know, yeah, it's a little boring. But they are the antithesis in interesting ways. And it brings a dynamic to each encounter you have that I don't feel like was really replicated in a lot of other games. When Tales of Zillia was announced and they showed off the bad guys there, I'm like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. We're going to do this again, huh? Yeah, and no, they didn't. And I frankly forget who most of those characters were. Uh, or, I guess this predates, uh, Thalog out of Gargoyles. Hmm. It's just Keith David getting to ham it up as evil Goliath. <laughs> He's having so much fun, you can tell, and it... Mm, I, I'm here for it. I dig it. God, I could listen to Keith David all day. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> all right, here's one from Fang. All right, Ian, since I've seen you answer so many Dragon Ball questions, I got one for you. If Goku was to meet Sun Wukong from Lego Monkey Kid, how would that meetup go? Fun fact, Goku and Wukong from Monkey Kid are both voiced by Sean Chamel, and Goku is based off some Sun Wukong. Yep. And... I think they'd get along just fine. And the um, Sun Wukong from Lego Monkey Kid, from my very tangential understanding of Journey to the West, is largely in character. He's, you know, a prankster. He's kind of full of himself, and he's just obscenely powerful. And Goku himself is a good-natured dude, so maybe Sun Wukong would kind of tease him, kind of bait him into conflict just for funsies until it's they figure out that no goku likes to fight it's just fun and then the two of them are like blipping from planet to planet throwing key blasts and fighting magical bull crap with magical bull crap and just have the time of their lives they, they'd have a good old time <laughs> and then they would eat an entire planet's worth of food because that's just what they do delicious also apparently the same guy voices uh black doom Fantastic. I'd forgotten that. Fantastic. <laughs> Come me. Come me. Ah, ah. 
It seems, it seems very subdued. <laughs> like he's falling asleep. <laughs> well, I ain't going to put range on that one. I want to blow up my throat. No, I know. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> and guy teach me how to do the kaioken pretty please i don't know how you do that voice i mean i've, <laughs> done, I've done it too and it's it's rough man it's it's that, that is turns your throat into ground chuck you got to resonate it in the chest more yeah, yeah take it off your vocal cords as much as possible mm-hmm. all right here's a question from fms draws how would you go about a Portal and Half-Life post-Alex to narrow it down? Crossover. I'm thinking like Shell and Half-Life 2 post-Alex or Gordon infiltrates Aperture. Go wild. Also, favorite track in both series? I don't know because Alex creates a divergent timeline. Yep. You know? Indeed it does. So I would rather, well, first off, I want to see episode three, except I don't because the coded synopsis that came out i don't particularly like i up to a point yeah the and likelihood of that ending up being the final version of half-life 3 is minimal at this point anyway sure um, so I mean, and alex you know it's its own franchise now or at least it's set up to be so who even knows where it would go and it's been a long time but i thought the implication was that uh, portal happened well well after the combine invasion and the seven year war and all of that like post freedom for humanity or is that conjecture i don't remember i don't remember either it's i don't think it's made very clear from what i remember the point is hmm. g-man comes in and like kidnaps gel and alex from alex and gordon from his own time and pits the three of them against you know some interdimensional horror three completely different perspectives three different completely different approaches to solving a problem and uh see how it goes from there yep interesting uh as far as favorite tracks from both series personally for me i like the um and the water hazard chase where you're on the airboat and getting hunted down by freaking helicopters and Mm -hmm. missiles flying at you um, the tracks that play during that segment, which are called Lambda Core and You're Not Supposed to Be Here. Um, <laughs> those are freaking bangers, man. Those are great. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of the game. And uh, the music is a big part of that. It just, it's so good and keeps driving you forward, literally and figuratively, you know. Just a good, good driving beat to go along with the explosions and everything going off around you. And then uh, I got to give the nod to Want You Gone from Portal 2. Yeah. I know Still Alive is a classic, but uh, it is. there's just something about Want You Gone that's it just sticks with me more. I think it's a stronger song. Yeah. Still Alive is very, very fun, very witty. Yes. But Want You Gone, I feel like, is just a stronger song in and of itself. Yeah. Yep. Also, in this scenario of crossovers, I want uh, Ross Scott off of Cursed Farms to voice Gordon Freeman. <laughs> yes, please. I think he's due. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he's the voice of Gordon as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you mentioned the boat chase, and that's all I can think of is him screaming of sanity. Yes. <laughs> God, that was so freaking funny. I like the whole freaking rant that he goes on when he's trying to freaking build the ramp to be able to jump <laughs> over the gate. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> this genius. This guy is a freaking genius. Uh, uh, thank you, Ross Scott. <laughs> Here's one from Jolene B. Does the Sonic's head-shaped island from the Mania title screen exist in-universe? Is it an illusion created by the Phantom Ruby? I'm pretty sure that's just an asset for the title screen. It's I don't think just, you're supposed to take it beyond that. Yeah, it's just a cool graphic thing that looks cool and is a cool thing. Sure, if you watch want... Watch, the next game's going to make a cannon. I'll have to eat my words. It well, wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> and finally, our last question this week comes to us... Or not this week. The last question today. Not this week, though. We have a lot more questions this week. But today comes to us courtesy of Dove. If you could write a story about serial mascots fighting, who would you involve? Who would win? 
I, I'm going to just have to bow out because that's already been done. You don't have to Breakfast write it. Of the, <laughs> yeah, Breakfast of the Gods by Brendan Douglas Jones does everything that I could possibly think of and far, far more. Um, it's an older web comic and it's harder to, you know, find because it's been taken down and archived and re-uploaded and lost again and such and such. But you can find it on Google pretty darn quick. But it's basically the heroic forces rallying under Captain Crunch to fight the evil forces rallying under Count Chocula. Captain Crunch. It is incredibly violent and dour but in an extremely self-aware sort of way which makes it both gripping and hilarious so that's it he he did it right it doesn't need to be done again i don't know if i've read this i don't i do kind of remember hearing something about it back in the day but i don't know if i ever read it i don't think i did but yeah this is uh this is very funny <laughs> uh Good stuff. Check that out here to give you a taste of the tone. So, you know, ahead of time, whether you want to read this or not, Mm -hmm. the mascots from the rice Krispies are kidnapped by the villains and tortured. And as they're broken apart, they crack, snapple and pop. You mean snap, crackle and pop? Yeah. Those words too. (laughs) Okay. Just making sure. What's a little bit of dyslexia between friends. Ah, you know, it's fine. (laughs) This was like, wait a minute, snapple. No, that's a different brand. Ian. <laughs> that's so, a yeah, if you find that funny, go for it. If you think that's a bit much, eh, you don't need to. It makes sense. I mean, also that's their names, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Hence the joke. Yes. Yes. All right, that's it. That's all we got for today. Yep, yep. Before we go, we need to give a, we need to give a big thank you to all the folks who make this show possible via their patronage over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, ko-fi.com slash bumblecast, or as a YouTube member. Big thank you to Daniel H, James K, Jennifer R, John B, Robotnicom, Sam Cybercat, Samuel P, Torchbound, Mike B, Dave M, Andrew D, Salute Your Cat, Couplin Crew 128, Jay Frost, Do Us Diz Din, Hero of Light 13, Professor Scruffy Matt, Ryan D, Chris A, Noni, Sonny, Triforce Riku, John M, Jib, Don B, Yami M, Fionan M, Lee HK, Lisa M, Invade Turbo Tunis, Ben Wolf Spain, Chavel, Sonic, 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 Scurvy Pirate Hog, Keeper of Monsters, Axis, Tick Tick, Xander Only the Painter, Arc Fighter, Jonathan D, The Name is X, Slayer Stain, Nimmerk, Godzilla, K- Justin S, Quaggle Gaggle, Professor Rye, Alex GS, Ava Arda, Cameron H, Dove, Dadler the Dalek, Sonic Legacy, Just a Mountain Soul, Pedanti Cat, Starlight Sec, Nondal, Red the Supernamic, Twilwood, Chad, Les, Jennifer H, Chaos Sonic 1, The Disgaean, Jolene B, Alpha Monor Yukon, Joshua S, Omega Watt, Dapper Shinks, Preston M, Noah S, Of the Stars, Sonic 84, Kojiro Highwind, Awesome Cakester, Super Sonic Fan, Red Wreath, Ink Thinks, and Tails, Chaz L, Darusival, Callum Q, Red Wolf, Wild 48, Maddie H, KGB, Miles the Prower, Navare, Exodel, Agent Kez, in Zephyr, Four Sonic Fan, The Marble Gardener, Rhythm Raccoon, Mox, Chaos Shadow, Mickey Sawdust, Pig Dan 20, Ty Cyan, Owen BD, Vlad, Oz Jam, Shimmy M, Puppy the Scholar, Curly Quills, Angela V, Michael P, Smiley 21, The Flower Garden, Sammy S, Delta God 77, Sterling Sonic, Jube, Conga, Shakira Law, Rocket Man, Windskull, Delonte, Supernova, Indabin, Superior Pizza, Sonic Patch, The Golf, Caswell, Mr. Murderbird, The Giant Murdering Bird, Lacey M, Crucified Demon, Loop D Loop, Omega Man 21, Fide, The Children Grow, Learn What's Right, Tetsu Knife, Kravo, Sonic Mania 2099, Hadronis, Nils, Noob 600, Paley, FMS Draws, Tef Cube, Sonic Bot, Peter M, L Technopata, Miles Browardy, Buttered Noodles, Frost the Hobbiton, Danny Light, Meta Mode, Wheels 282, Hedgehog, and Jamal S. Dang, that name, that, that list has changed a little bit. Just a little bit. Kind of threw me off there. That is an incredible list of names. Thank you, everybody, as always, for your support, for listening, for enjoying, for sharing the show. Uh, Even if you're a hate listener, that's cool. I mean, as long as you're listening, (laughs) it's all that matters. That's going to do it for now. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we will see you next time on the Bumblecast. See you later. The chicken chicken grow. Man, (laughs) I'm having a hard time. Rorschach, are you eating those beans cold? I couldn't find a microwave pot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Goofy. What do you see in this ink block test? A pretty butterfly. Sure. I'm sure he does. <laughs> you got it all wrong. 
I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Wee! Who wants balloons? <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. All the balloon animals are just like squiggles like his mask. No. <laughs> This is almost as bad as the <laughs> almost as bad as Spamton last week. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing is as bad as Spamton. Well, I mean, that's true. He's a terrible person. But also a very funny person, so mm. you know. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. Mute them all. Mute everything. <laughs> Just mute Twitter. All of it muted. Send them to Mute City. Yes. <laughs> mute. 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 <laughs> mute. Mute. Not listening to you. Mute. 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 You go away now. I'm not listening to a word that, is big that blue. you say. Yeah, that's Big Blue, but that's okay. Ah, <laughs> it's a better song anyway. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and f- it's been like silent hill here for the past two days so the fog is finally lifted the fog has lifted the waters have receded wait no that's a different <laughs> not gonna lie it was a little in- you know one day of foggy weather oh it's kind of neat that's kind of fun two days uninterrupted where i can't see the building that's 20 feet away from mine cool a little unsettling <laughs> L- little <laughs> worrisome <laughs> That is pretty cool. Honestly, I like that. <laughs> Triforce Riku, Captain Falkflin. Uh-huh. Not Flinken. <laughs> Instead of show me your moves, it's ask me your questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have no response except to laugh. I have nothing to add. <laughs>